I have been blessed with the privilege and the honor to be her husband. Unfortunately for her, she has been tormented and tortured with the ability to have to long suffer through being my wife. I am grateful. The woman that will speak the word of God to you all, I can assure you, one thing about me, I don't shut no job. I'm not going to lie to anybody. She lives by the word. Amen. 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 Me as a prayer woman, me as a joy, me at 4 o'clock in the morning, slobbering, still talking unto the Lord. Amen. Amen. Me will go on a three day fast, no food, water, right. and other things that accompany it. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> the truth of the scripture in which we are to grow in grace. She's a patient woman. She's a loving woman. But she's a wise woman. Yes. She's strangely bold and courageous. She has the nerve to rebuke me when I called myself doing the right thing. I was giving away my tithe money to try to help somebody pay their rent and I thought I was doing the right thing to do it. And she rebuked me and left it at that. And I didn't know how to handle that at the time. And I realized, God, you gave me something. <laughs> I didn't like it. I ended up loving it in the end. I'm asking you all to prepare yourself to hear from the Lord. She has been diligent in her study. She has been diligent in her fasting. She has been diligent in her petition. And she has been a woman of wisdom, but also a woman of virtue. Proverbs 31, verse 10 through 31, should have her face right before you get into that scripture. And I am blessed as well as honored again to be her husband. She called me king. And before we were married, she called me Lord. Now, man, you know, that word is big with us. And I, I almost told her, don't ever say that again. But then I was reminded of the scripture that the Bible says, Sarah called Abel, or Sarah, Lord. And it was a heavy duty on my heart. But it was my confirmation that she was my wife. And I was to be her husband. So I'm asking you all to stand on your feet. As once again, I present the song that introduced the others. My beautiful queen, Sister Leo Roy, y'all give a hand clap. for a savior like our Jesus. <clears throat> I'm passing first lady, my mother and father in the ministry, everybody down here in the name of Jesus Christ, and my loving husband who makes me even more nervous. Let me tell you something about him. Before we were married, I used to randomly just fall back. I don't know why I did it. I just laid on back. And he will always be there to catch me. There was one time we were here at the church, we were doing something with Pastor, and Jacob was distracted. But once again, I don't know why I did. I just felt like falling backwards and see if he's going to catch me. And before he does, he's going to catch And so I, he was not even behind me. He was kind of adjacent to me, but he was not behind me because most of the time I did it and it surprised him and shocked him. He was like, oh, okay, we're doing this, okay. So I fell back this one time. And Jacob did all his, I guess, his peripherals as good as he think it is. He turned around quickly, stepped behind me, and he caught me. So, and now before we were man and wife, we weren't one yet, so he couldn't read my thoughts like we're supposed to be able to read each other's thoughts. But um, I'm grateful, you know, for him. I was going to tell a funny story about him, how I was pleasant at him this morning. <laughs> but he always <laughs> treats him with love. <laughs> And he said, yo, listen, you got sleep this morning, so I'm going to be better. <laughs> and what do you say to that? Praise the Lord. Um, I'm going to start out with Romans 5, verses 1 through 5. 
And when you have it, if you don't mind, I'll carve the word. Please stand to your feet. All right. <clears throat> I'm reading out of the New American Standard Bible. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. For whom we have obtained our introduction by faith into this grace in which we stand. And we exult in hope of the glory of God. And not only this, we also exult in our tribulations. Nor that tribulations bring forth perseverance. And perseverance, proven character. And proven character, hope. And hope does not disappoint. Because the love of God has been poured out within our hearts. The Holy Spirit who was given to us. You may be seated. Um, praise the Lord. Uh, I battle with this. If Sister Mia knew everything, I would have said her sometimes. Because sometimes I talk, my mind is always tingled. So I just kind of stop and smooth out my thoughts. And just to me, I knew everything. I wouldn't offend when I'm trying to help. And just to me, I knew everything. I would forget so much better. I would love so much kinder. I would listen more than I talk. I definitely would do that. And just to me, I knew everything. I would know exactly what to say and what to say. And since I do not know what to say right. and when to say it, because I do not know everything, right. I do what I know and I lean on the Holy Spirit to give me the rest. In the scripture, and I battle with the scripture, I battle with the scripture because um, God gave my husband last year for this month the series of hope. We started um, in the first week with Hope being the initiator and faith going out to get what hope desires. Last week it was hope, or week before last rather, hope of warfare for battle. For that we talk about David and Goliath. God just blew my mind several times with that one. And he told me I'm going to start teaching a little bit more in 2016. And ahead of time I had picked this Tuesday. Because I was on the North of spring break. And I said, okay, I'll have time to rest and actually study. And so, I'm going to tell you the title yet, but God has given us hope for this week. So with that being said, when I was praying about, Lord, where do you want to take me on Tuesday? Um, he led me to the scripture. And in verse 3, it starts off with tribulation. We exalt, we praise, we rejoice in tribulation. And the word, when I looked it up, you know, as we always do, when, we, when I looked up the word, it said trouble. So I praise when trouble comes. Because with trouble comes perseverance. With perseverance comes proven character. And with proven character comes hope. And perseverance is that thing that unrelentless, unrelentless, that relentless, Tenacity on the inside of you that makes you keep going in spite of opposition, in spite of failures, in spite of setbacks. So my trouble leads to me keep pressing on, keep pressing on, keep pressing on. And my keep pressing on leads to a development, a maturity of who I am. Not just who I am, but a maturity of who I am. And then who I am as I am being built, I'm still going through these troubles. It leads to hope, which is expectation and confidence. And then this is when I battle with guidance. Remember that I said hope does not disappoint. Because when I was saying this, it was fresh in my spirit when our sister passed away. Hope does not disappoint so many of us. We had such hope and it felt disappointed. So I said, okay, Lord, trust the Lord all your heart. Lord, I don't even understand. Yes. Just fall on him. Yeah. That God has told me to even fall. I don't do it anymore because we're one now. I know you're going to catch me. <laughs> but just fall, just lean back on me and the things that you don't know. Um, there are two 
scriptures, the three examples where we're going to be reading. Um, I'm going to ask Brother Jacob to read, if you want to turn in your Bibles, he will be reading John 11, 1 through 6. Then he'll skip to verse 20 through 22. And then he's going to read 32 through 40. And Sister Davis, who so graciously helped me, helped me as well, she'll be reading first. Um, Luke 8, stage chapter. Verse 41 through 50. Thank you. So, today, whenever you have, you can go ahead and start. And behold, there came a man named Jairus, excuse me, and he was ruler of the synagogue, and he fell down at Jesus' feet, and besought him that he would come into his house, for he had one only daughter, about 12 years of age, and she lay a dying. But as he went, the people thronged him, and a woman, having an issue of blood 12 years, which had spent all her living upon physicians, neither could be healed of any, came behind him and touched the border of his garment, and immediately her issue of blood stenched. And Jesus said, Who touched me? Yes. When all denied, Peter and they that were with him said, Master, the multitude throng thee and press thee, and sayest thou who touched me? And Jesus said, Somebody hath touched me. For I perceive that virtue is gone out of me. And when the woman saw that she was not hid, she came trembling and falling down before him. She declared unto him before all the people for what cause she had touched him, and how she was healed immediately. And he said unto her, Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace. While he yet spake, there cometh one from the ruler of the synagogue's house, saying to him, Thy daughter is dead. Trouble, the ma trouble not the master. But when Jesus heard it, he answered him, saying, Fear not, believe only, and she shall be made whole. And when he came into the house, he suffered no man to go in, save Peter and James and John, and the father and the mother of the maiden. And all wept and bewailed her. But he said, Weep not. She is not dead, but sleepeth. And they laughed to scorn him, knowing that she was dead. And he put them all out and took her by the hand and called, saying, Maid, arise. And her spirit came again, and she arose straightway, and he commanded to give her meat. Amen. Now a certain man was sick, Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary and her sister Martha. It was that Mary who anointed the Lord with fragrant oil and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore the sisters said to him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom you love is sick. When Jesus heard that, he said, This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister, and Lazarus. So when he heard that he was sick, he stayed two more days in the place where he was. It's now Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. But Mary was sitting in the house. Now Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been, there, been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. And verses 13 to 40. Then when Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she fell down at his feet, saying to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Therefore, when Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her weeping, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled. And he said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. Then the Jews said, See how he loved him. And some of them said, Could not this man who opened the eyes of the blind also have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus again, then Jesus again groaned in himself, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone lay against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of him who was dead, said to him, Lord, by this time there is a stench, for he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not say to you that if you would believe, you would see the glory of God? Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Since this is so chunky, I was going to get the reading out. So thank you for bearing with me. So starting in Luke, we read Luke chapter 8, verses 41 through 50. And the two accounts here. A while back, 
when I gave my husband a revelation. And I took it and I ran with that. He had used the sermon two Sundays ago. And uh, it, he pointed out that the woman with the issue of blood had been struggling with her issue of blood for 12 years. Right. And when we have the point of connection with Jared's daughter, it was she who was 12 years old and she passed away. So on this side, on the side of the woman with the issue of blood, we have her starting this 12-year tenure with death. And on this side, with Jairus' daughter, we have this tenure starting with life because she was giving birth. And then right here in this is this one scripture they both meet. So the moment when the woman with the issue of blood comes and she touches Jesus, Life is given forth. But in that moment as well, they receive the news that death on the side had happened. Starting with the woman with the issue of blood. And by the way, the title of this sermon, teaching had with you well, is Hope Disturbs Jesus. So we have the woman with the issue of blood. And we talked about how tribulations, troubles, is the starting part, the birthing part to our hope. Because it's through my troubles, I start becoming more determined. And when I become more determined, my character is built and mature. And as my character is built and mature, hope, which does not fail, this is not, this is not the point, is getting light to. So this woman started off her trouble. Her trouble was her starting off with blood. What this thing happened in their custom, she had to be put out. Go out. Go now. Out. Because who you are, you are essential, mm -hmm. you are unclean, right, right. and we cannot have that contaminating our population. Right, right, right. So, throughout the 12 years, the Bible says that she persevered. She spent all her money, right, and nothing could, could have happened. No healing to pay. Right. And for some of us, 12 years is a long time to struggle with one thing. Right. And this thing gripped her. It wasn't just her health, it was her life. When I said she was dying, because when you're being drained on a daily basis. So, her trouble started making her fight. Okay, I'm going to try this position, I'm going to try this position, I'm going to try this position. Failure, 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 failure. But perseverance is, I'm going to keep going and fight a failure. Why do said that? It's not right. Failures. So she hears about this man named Jesus. And she hears that he is coming to her city. And I guess in her mind, even though she's on the outside, she's hearing the wisdom made through the cracks in the walls. I don't know how she found out. But I know that she decided to press away. So if you don't know what's wrong with me, God remind me of this example. Don't judge me. This is when I was in college. In my senior year of college, the Saints won the Super Bowl. So me and my friends excited about the Saints um, winning the Super Bowl. We went down to our, the business center. We call it downtown. They call it the business center. Just to, just to enjoy the atmosphere of the city. So we're in the French Quarter, you know, which is somewhat sane. You know, people are in the street. They have their dogs in the little Saints outfits. You know, people were just, they were just having a good time. And in fact, they said after the Super Bowl, there was no crime in the city two weeks. So people were just rejoicing that this happened. And somehow we started making our way to Bourbon. Now, I don't care what Bourbon is six. I, 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 there's a whole bunch of things wrong with Bourbon Street, but to me, it's six, and I don't want to be a part of it. And But the crowd was so thick that we were guided against our will to this area. And it was February, right? It's cold, it's hot. Oh, Bourbon Street was hot. It was burning up because all the bodies that were in the, in the areas, in the vicinity. So you we were being thronged. And I was being thronged to the point where this man with this cry of belly, cry of belly, was guiding me where he wanted me to go. Literally, with his belly. I want to turn left, but his belly, he wants to go right, so his belly pushed me in the direction. So we have this crowd thronging Jesus, mm -hmm. the picture. pressing on Jesus, all kind of all God's ungodly breath on his neck. Yeah. He's being pushed and touched in every direction. He might even be, God, he's not even walking at this point. He's just being 
pushed right. and in the direction that he's going. Wow, that makes sense. Good. And Good. somehow in the midst of this, this woman who's near Look death, that. who's being trained, who has, who thinks, who has all this kind of outside oh, oh, oh. Mm-hmm. stigma to her, attached to her, right. fights the crowd. Yeah. She fights the crowd just to get down low mm-hmm. and touch the hand of this crowd. Let them marinate. Because I'm like, the Lord let them marinate inside of me. So, and this is so you can imagine why Peter said, What you mean? Who touched you? Right. We all touching you. <laughs> I'm trying to ask them not to touch you. We're trying to guard the area so that you're air for me. But you know, what do you mean? touched you. Right, right. It's so packed. Because everybody wants a miracle. They know what Jesus can do. Yeah. Their hope. So, he turned around and said, no, someone touched me because I felt power leave me. Yeah. And the woman said she saw that she could not hide. Mm-hmm. How can she hide when there's a crowd right. and bodies are compact right. together? Right. They're stuck together. Yeah. But she saw that she could not hide because Jesus was not going to move until she acknowledged something. Right, right. So the Bible says that she spoke forth boldly. Amen. That means she had to declare, yes, Lord, it was me. Wow. I've been struggling with this thing for 12 years, and I knew that you could heal me. Yeah. Paraphrase. So Jesus said, daughter, he calls her daughter. I'm ready to call her daughter. I'm going to get back to that. He says, Jesus says, daughter, your faith made you well, not go in peace. So, with that being said, her faith brought about her healing, but it was his acknowledgement that gave her peace. Uh, Why is peace so important in the situation? Because once again, she is not even supposed to be here. She's not supposed to be here. I'm pretty sure they were even looking at when she came forth and so when she was like, isn't that that girl who's outside the city? Right. What's she doing here? Yeah. And even if they weren't saying that, I'm pretty sure inside of her brain, she was thinking, yeah. I'm not supposed to be here. Right. Yeah. right, absolutely. So God gave her peace to go forth with her healing. Because sometimes God gives us healing, he gives us deliverance, but we're so overcome with the demons of our past right. Right. that we doubt what God has done for us. Right. So God told her to go, child, keep going, keep being who you are, but go with peace. Because I have healed you, I have delivered you, I have set you free. You are not free, and you belong here. It's like the Lord. I call this portion "Hope Stretched Out." So the next part, when I'm going to rewind a little bit in our text, we start with Jericho and the city, and in verse. 40, because I said Julius started 41. In verse 40, it says that the people heard that he was coming and welcomed him. So Jesus, I imagine, is stationary. Because Jairus was able to travel to him. So if Jairus being able to travel to him, that means Jesus, now if he's moving, it's going to be a lot more, much more harder to get to him. So Jairus travels to Jesus, and he says that he's an official of the synagogue. So as an official of the synagogue, I'm assuming he name dropped a little bit. If you will, get close. And in the Amplified Version, it said that he was an official for a long time. So he used who he was to get close to Jesus. But this is the part that I love. When he got to Jesus, the Bible said he fell to his feet and he began to implore him. Because in this moment, he started realizing that his need was greater than his image. He started realizing that his desire for deliverance is greater than who he was. So I don't mind going down to Jesus' feet because I have a need. And who I am has not cured her. Who I am has not set her free. Who I am has not redeemed her. She is still dying even though who I am. So the Bible said he came to Jesus and he knelt down at the feet of Jesus and he began to beg him, please come with me. My daughter is dying. She's at the point of death. So hope to serve Jesus. He gets up. I know the people around me. So he gets up and he moves with Jairus. And I can imagine Jairus. I got the master with me. I got this healer with me. Oh, 
say, yes, thank the Lord. I know my God's going to heal because I know what Jesus can do. I've seen him do everything yeah. everywhere else. I know what Jesus, so I'm excited. So imagine his, his whole building up to this great big bubble that he knows that it's going to be made well today. Amen. And then the woman of the issue of blood happened. Amen. And his hope is interrupted. Right. Wow. Which is the subtitle of the section. Hope interrupted. Uh -huh. right. uh -huh. That's good. That's good. So his hope is interrupted. Mm. He allows the master to be sidetracked with someone else's problem. Mm. He stands there in silence because we don't hear anything about him. But he stands there in silence and someone else gets their deliverance. Wow. Wow. That's what happened. Man, it's rich. Mm. I'm praying for my own deliverance. Yeah. Yes. In the midst of I see God moving, because he was moving with them. Yeah. In the midst of God moving with them, stop. Let me address this other problem. In the midst of him being kind, being courteous, not crying out, but you said we're going to do this right now. In the midst of he didn't say, we don't see him talking back to the master, because who am I? We already established that he realized that his need was greater than his image. Right. So he knows that who he is is not important right now. Right, right, right. Good Thank yeah. you, Lord. So he stops. Okay. The woman gets healed. Cool. But as the woman gets healed, someone else presses her way through the crowd and arrives and says, Don't bother Jesus anymore. Your daughter is dead. Your daughter has passed, but I did not hear. And you know what I love about this verse? I stopped exactly there for a reason. Because, spoiler alert, Jesus has healed her. But I stopped right there because we don't even see Jesus being able to speak for himself. Right, right. After hope was interrupted, Jesus spoke up at Jairus. Right. And he told him to just believe. He answered the doubts on behalf of Jairus. Uh huh. And he told her, told them, just believe. He encouraged Jairus when Jairus wasn't even to say anything for himself. Just believe, the master says. Just believe. Just believe. Just believe. Just believe. So Jairus had no other point, or no other alternative, rather, but to just believe. See, in the midst of our hope interrupted, our disappointment does not mean that Jesus has disappeared. Ooh. In the midst of our disappointment, it does not mean that Jesus has disappeared. Because as the man is speaking, we don't see Jesus speaking, but we know that he's still standing there. Right, right, right. In fact, Jesus didn't even intercept the message because he already knows what the man coming to him was about to say. But he does not say anything, but he also did not disappear. We know that Jesus can himself up in the middle of a second right. and right back somewhere else. But Jesus does not disappear. He stays there. He lets the opposition get their words out. And then he addressed our opposition yeah. and encouraged Jairus. Yeah. Right. Take me to her. Hope interrupted. And I'm not rushing, but we're getting to our third part. And part in John. We read in John about the, the, the story of Lazarus. Yes. It starts off with saying that there was a certain man, a particular man. Somebody was going to point out. He was the brother of Mary, God even points her out, who washed his feet. So these people, we've come to realize that Jesus is friends. He loves them. But still, in verse 6, we see Jesus deciding intentionally to stay put for two days. While his friends are in a plethora of emotions. So we have here, when Jesus starts his way to the city of Bethany, and he's talking, and Martha arrives up to him and says, Jesus, if you were here, my brother would not have died. But I like what she said, and that's one of the reason why we, I highlighted verses 20 to 22. I like what she said, but she said, but even so now, I know whatever you ask of the Father, he will do for you. 
So her hope was that he would get her in time for her brother not to even taste that. Because the Bible said he was sick. It didn't say he was dying. Mm -hmm. It said he was sick. But if, when we read those in-between passages, the ones that I left out intentionally, Jesus knows that he's going to die. Right. So in the midst of the things that are happening, she says, even now, whatever you ask of the Father, I know it will be done. So Jesus goes, and he keeps going, and then Mary comes, and she says the same thing. And you know, we know that they're friends, but they kind of talk to Jesus differently than everybody else in the Bible yeah. talks to him. They talk to him like his disciples talk to him. What do you mean? They, they question him. Yeah. And you know, normally, now I'm assuming because they're men, you correct that, what do you mean? Or that little thing. But he does not even correct him. He let them say what they have to He understands the situation. He cares. He cares for them so much that the Bible says in verse 35 that Jesus wept, period. Yeah. That's what the verse contains. Jesus wept. You know, that's one of those verses that when you're little and your mama says you, you get some candy, you can quote scripture. Jesus wept, period. So I was going to say it now because I want to get my point across. Jesus wept, period. And I let them know that he cared for his brothers. And he cared for his sisters. He cared for them. And so we see them in the midst of everything that's going on, the funeral arrangements. You have your professional mourners crying and weeping. And even so, you have some people seeing Jesus Christ and oh, he loves Lazarus. But even though the realists on the other side they say, well, if you really loved him, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. the same man yeah, yeah, yeah. who can cure the blind. Yeah. And he even goes, I'm going to pull out Jesus' resume. Who yeah. turned on her to run. Yeah, yeah. Pull out his resume. <laughs> who fed 5,000 with yeah. a few fish and a few loaves. Yeah. This same man who yeah. said that I have the power to get sin, take your bed up and walk. Yeah. Yeah. The same man kept trying to get to the, the pool of Salome and every year, every year the season of all his trouble, he cannot reach because he had no help. Yeah. Jesus comes and he sees him. So you know about all these, I heard about all these miracles in other oh. places. Glory to God. Why can't we have a miracle in my place? Uh -huh. Hope altered. Mm. Because the hope of Jesus, his expectation, his desire was to give glory to God. Right. But in order for the good glory to God, something had to happen. Yeah. Right. So I imagine he's hearing those naysayers. It even reminds me of a personal story. Spoiler alert aside. Um, my cousin Bobby was a truck driver. He got into a horrible accident and got a um, long experience life. So he couldn't work anymore. Something, he was in critical condition, something. But God and my uncle to be there to minister to my cousin Bobby to where he receive the gift of eternal life yeah, yeah. before he spirit, he takes his death. And at his funeral, I hear my uncle scream out, Oh Lord, you can't do this to me. And I see a swarm of people rushing around them. Because what happened was my aunt, I saw my underly, so I get up to the restroom, I saw her come back, and I hear my uncle screaming. My aunt was so distraught that she Passed away there in her son's field. Wow. So, I'm not saying this to get up this, but I'm getting to my point. So, after this, we're all, you know, we go back to the campgrounds because we were in the boondocks. We go back to the campgrounds and where they were serving the food. I'm about to enter into the cafeteria and I hear these two men saying, He said, God can't do this. You can't do this to me, God. God can do what He wants. And that made me, that rose back righteous indignation because you don't understand what is going on. So, how can you say that? So I'm putting that scenario, that's what helped me to put myself in that scenario of Jesus hearing the realist yeah, yeah. and the romantic, those who go, oh, Jesus oh, cares for him. Oh, yeah, well, well, can he do this? Yeah, right, right. So the Bible says he was moved again. Uh, he was moved again. He, in the King James Version, he even said he groomed inside of himself. Right, right. Because he understood that the hope that he had to bring glory to the Father was not necessarily aligned with the hope that Mary and Martha have and everything people have. Come on. That Lazarus was being healed before he reached out. Oh, wow, wow. So God, Jesus had to do 
deal with their hope being altered. He had to deal with their hope being a little disappointed right now. He had to deal with what their hope disturbed Jesus. It disturbed Jesus. It disturbed disturbed Jesus. But you know what I like about this? He didn't address the naysayers. He didn't even address the romantic people. He turned around and as Martha, he told people, you know, move back to stone. And Martha said to them, no, he didn't make a predict. You don't want to do that. You don't want to do that. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. You don't want to do that. Mm -mm. But instead of addressing the crowd, he turns to the person who he loves, who he cares about. And once again, it we hear him say, if you only believe. If you only believe. So, as I'm coming to my close, we have three situations. A hope stretched out. A woman who had to press through the crowd just to touch his garments. Had to deal with all the people who talked about him, even deal with her mental psyche just to receive her healing. And you know what I like in the situation as well, and I didn't mention it before. She also realized that her me was greater than her image. But this image is different yeah. than Jeremy, because if Jeremy had an image up here, she would have an image on here. Come on. So right. with that being okay. said, we have some people coming down before the Father. Humility, proving character, proving yeah. character, yeah. show my character, Lord. I'm coming before the Father because I am nothing. We have some people up here and realize I am nothing. And then we have some people down here right. who know they're nothing. Yeah. Who knows they're not don't belong or who feels they don't belong. But Jesus turns to them and says, you are my family. But before he even says you are my family, calls his daughter, she had to get over her own self, her own mindset. My need is greater than my enemy. I need to get to the master. I need to get to the master. I need healing. Because the thing is, I've experienced setback. I've setback. But it's only making me stronger mentally. It's only making me stronger eternally. It's maturing my character. My character is being proven by the faith of God. I can stand God's favor by faith because I know I have hope to get to where I need to be. So her hope drove her faith into action. It came into high gear. Yeah. See, the thing is, our hope is initiated by our trouble. Our hope is started, is birthed, given light to us by the things that are bringing us down, by the chaos that is surrounding us, by the things that are weighing on my spirit, by my mourning and my grieving. My hope yeah. is starting from a tribulation from my trial. From the thorns in my side. Yeah. From the things that God just won't move. My hope. My hope. Yeah, yeah. I got you. I keep hoping for faith. Yeah. I keep hoping for deliverance. Yeah. I keep hoping for it. Yeah. But I put this inside. But Jesus told Paul, my grace is sufficient. It is. Right. It is. The state of being my favor because grace is God's favor. The state of being my favor is sufficient. For the trouble you're dealing with today. If it's only if you're getting closer to him. If the trouble I've waited, do you think he would have put it in your life? I got it, man. He says, as Kim said, it's not a cliche, he won't put more of a we can bear. Because I know what we bear is too too much. And I'm praying. But there is a point where it's just enough so we get inside ourselves. Yeah, I'm carrying this load, but it will come off of me one day. Yes. One day. Yes. So right now, I'm going to keep crawling. I'm going to keep crawling in the midst of the crowd. And then we have Mary, because when she 
head to Jesus. Even though she already washed his feet with her hair, she got down low to him. While she's petitioning him, and he's like, you know my sorrow, and if you would, if you would have just been here, I would not be experiencing this grief right now. You would not have just showed up. But Jesus let us know that he walked purposely. He didn't walk slowly. He walked purposely. Jesus was not slow to get into them. He purposed on how long it should take to get to them. So in this day, I know that I'm going back to my original saying that if I knew everything, I would know what to say. And it's so easy for me to tell you, have hope in God. And hope does not disappoint. But today, if you're dealing with a disappointed hope, mm. if you feel like your hope has been disappointed, and if it's been burdened down a little bit, and you feel like that crowd is a little too thick for you to get through, yeah. and you feel like your name should have been just enough for your daughter to get your healing or give her whatever circumstance it is, and if you feel like your connection or your closeness of your relationship with God she already granted you what you have asked for already, I want you to know how hope in God, um, not just in what He can do. Right. Have hope in God. Have hope in Jesus. Not just what he can do. Once again, I know it's cliche to say, so please forgive me. But have hope in Jesus. Not just in what he can do. Because I didn't marry my husband, not just what he can do for me, but I married him for who he was. And because of who he is, it encompasses all the things he does for me. So when we have hope in Jesus, it encompasses all the things he does for us. Come on, put our hands together and celebrate the Lord. <laughs> Hope is birthed through tribulation. Did you get that today? Hope. So that's why we glory in tribulation. The reason why we glory, not because we like pain, we glory in tribulation because we know what the pain does. The pain produces gain. And when you know pain produces gain, you go back to the gym even after your body has not fully recovered because pain means strength. Put your hands together. Let's tell God I thank you. That's what Job said. Job was going through so much. And sometimes you can't even explain to smart people what you're going through. You can't even explain to church folks sometimes what you're going through. Because sometimes they only skip from their little garden perspective. But one thing Job said, Job says, well, I can't explain what I'm going through. But one thing I know, I know my Redeemer lives. And I know he will restore me on the day of his coming. Mother Clark calls that a testimony. You got to know that you know that you know that you know who God is. Yeah. And when you know who God is, this is what you do when trouble comes. Deanna, when you know God has your back, and just because he has your back doesn't mean everything's going to be fun. Doesn't mean everything's going to be happy. Doesn't mean everything's going to be joyful. But when you know God has your back, you raise your hand in the middle of the trouble. You worship him in the middle of the pain. You find yourself confounded for people because you're glorified in the midst of my service. I praise you for God all by yourself. Yeah. If you wait till you understand everything, you'll never worship God. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs, the farmer that waits for perfect weather to plant will never plant anything. You cannot wait until everything goes your way to praise God. You got to praise him in the storm. You got to praise him in the rain. You got to praise him when your husband's going to do it. You got to praise him when your wife doesn't do good. You got to praise him when your kids are on drugs. You got to praise him no matter what. And if you praise him, you will get to 
the point where he will come to your graveside and move your phone and speak to that situation and say, tell somebody. The only thing you can do is get him there because you can't roll it away. You can't even move that mouth and you can't speak to that situation. But you need him. That's why you don't want to leave without him because you're going to need him down this life's journey. You're going to need a Jesus on your side. I'll say this last thing. I don't want to get excited. That's what the devil has been doing your whole life to get you so frustrated you stop praying. That, that's what he's enjoying your whole life. Get you so frustrated that you stop singing praise to God. But a sure enough believer like my mama, when God takes a husband, she said, God, I'm going to bless your name. Anyhow, you are worthy of praise. I don't understand, but I give you praise. I didn't throw the Lord because I don't like it, but you're still God. I praise you. I worship you. 